The Glynn Amateur Boxing Club started and affiliated to the Irish Amateur Boxing Association in 1985. And how that came about was, was that a Glynn Sports Centre was opened by the Corporation or Dublin City Council, probably I think in 1983. And a number of different type clubs were formed. And one of them uh, asked for, by all of the people of the area, was for a boxing club for the young boys take them off the road so far and uh, get them interested in something. And uh, that's where I came in. Um, I didn't have any background in boxing. I was in the football uh, business. And, uh, but I, I had um, a love of boxing and um, a good many of my friends from town where I'm from are boxing people. And um, so I was asked, would I go in and just uh, try and do something for the the, 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 the the young boys that were turning up and get a training program started and so forth. So I went in and I did. And uh, that was the end of my football career because I'm still and I have been for the last 40 years now involved with the boxing. So we had a stroke of luck and two former Irish uh, boxers uh, represented our country and so forth who boxed for the Transport Boxing Club at, at that time had uh, happened to live in the area and had retired themselves, starting uh, new families or young kids coming on and they, they had finished. So I met up with them, two brothers called Shay Thompson and Tommy Thompson. I told them what we were trying to do. I asked them would they be interested in uh, becoming coaches in the club and they did. And he said, only if you become the secretary of the <laughs> club and it means you have to attend meetings every week in the National Stadium. So I did, and that's how it, and we affiliated, and as I said, in 1985, and um, we have gone on from there. The opportunity came up that we were, as you can see, we were overcrowded, we needed more space, uh, we needed more training time, we were restricted in hours with the Glen Boxing Club over in uh, the Sports Centre over in Glen Road there. I haven't said that they were great to us over there, we had no hassle with them over there, they were great to us, but we needed more training time for competitions and things like that coming up. Most good clubs, the, the, the famous clubs that we know in boxing clubs in, the, in Dublin, all own their own premises, have their own times, have their own ring up, set up, left, so that when the boxers come and go, everything is just there, you start immediately, there's no, fr no time frame in the sense of equipment, putting things up or getting things done when you're on a time frame like we were in the Glen for one hour and two hour sessions. Yeah. So we think that with this now, owning our own premises or having our own premises, with everything functional from as soon as you open the door to when you close the, the, the doors late in the evening, it's already set, we're ready to go and we think that this will benefit the boxing and uh, that day will come quite quickly we think now that we will have senior champions. Yeah. It was absolutely derelict. It was, uh, it was an absolute mess. But you have to give credit to Alan McCabe now from Northside. He gave us a great dig out, like, and cleared out the stuff and all that. But it was a complete derelict site. We've done all the work here ourselves, like, us, myself, and a couple of the coaches there. We mainly fund ourselves. We found ourselves through uh, subs for the kids that are coming up, like there's a lot of subs, like we do fund ourselves. We applied for loans, or loans, you hear me loans, we've applied for grants, but we haven't been successful in any of them. So we're tied to a short term lease here, and any of the major grants that you have to go, go for, you have to have a security, security of tenure for five years, but we haven't got that. So that's another obstacle that we have to overcome. So we will overcome it in the future. My name is Madeleine Ebbs. I am a senior community officer for Dublin City Council. And I linked in with Brian here about six months ago when he was looking for premises to train the kids in the area. Well, where do we start? Like, as I said, I started at the top, we started talking the programme before. Um, Marie Handen. I started off with Marie Handen, then she introduced me to Madeleine. Like, Madeleine came on board then, and as I said to you in the last clip, uh, she took the reins on, she set up all the meetings, she went to all the meetings, she made great relationships with uh, Alan McCabe, the head of Northside, she done all the negotiations, everything that you can think of, and I just, as I said before, I was just in her coattails hanging behind her, so this place is all down to Madeline, so... No, that's, that's my job, I'm community development officer, 
So my job would be linking in with the communities and trying to help communities develop themselves. And of course, I'd have a special interest in keeping kids occupied and in sport. Um, like I'd be a, a great advocate of sport. And um, it's great that Brian was so passionate about boxing and um, he could see the potential for the amount of kids that we'd actually get in here. And the way I look at it, it's 50, 60 kids that are not hanging around the streets or, you know, going to probably get into drug dealing, stolen cars. They're over here and they're training away. And they, I'd say they, some of them will make really great potential oh, boxers. Yeah. That was the whole idea, getting the, like Madeline had the, the foresight to see what is potential could happen over here. As John Moore said before, the champions that we can breed out of this now, please God, is, the facilities are second to none. So that's the whole idea, it's getting champions, getting kids off the street and keeping them quiet. <laughs>Soccer teams on the Oscar Trainer Road, a um, fella called Frank Derby and his wife Rosemary. They, they're, all these are volunteers who are coming out and um, spending four or five nights a week standing training kids. So what we're trying to do is, I think Brian's had them over yeah, already, them over, yeah. have the kids from the soccer in here doing some upper body strength training. Um, we're going to try and link them into the pool across the north side. And um, we've already got one chap from this club, a scholarship, down with Fitzert in the GAA um, down in Parnells and Kulak Village and that cert will give him European accreditation to actually instruct in gym fitness. So already like in a very short space of time like we've achieved an awful lot with young people in the area. Yeah. Um, my name is Darren Campbell, I'm head coach of the Glen Amateur Boxing Club and I'm here seven days a week. <laughs> um, basically I teach the kids from age 10 up to 20 odd. I teach them, keep them off the streets, the main target for us. That's my main target is to keep them off the streets. Um, just, it's great to have, be involved and have fun with the kids. So, um, hopefully we get a couple of champions out of it. That's what we want. <laughs> Other than heartache, um, no, it's it's. I just love it. It's in me blood. I just I love coming here. I just can't get enough of it. Just this is this is where I, this is where I live. I'd, I'd move in here tomorrow if I got the chance. I would be here twenty four seven. Did, I'm not far off. I'm here all the time. It's great. It's just the adrenaline, the the the, the atmosphere of the kids to get the kids see the kids getting something out of it is what is the the joy. Do you know? It's just it's great. And then my other coach, like he was here for me, so now we're putting it back into the community as well. My, I can't even describe. That's being honest with you, I can't. It's just, it's out of this world. Like my coach was fighting for years to get a place. I just couldn't do it. And then Brian came along, and we started getting motions rolling, and then we ended up here. And he says, Brian. <laughs> How am I going to run this size of this place? Like, this is big, man. <laughs> so, no, it's great. It's, it's a dream. It's, it, it is a dream now. It's, it's fabulous. We can't, can't ask for any more. That's being honest with you. you well, <laughs> we can ask for more. More coaches and help. We need more coaches. That's, we, need, we need help as well. And funding and stuff. It's just it's very hard. But it's great. I wouldn't change it for the world. Well, we and have, hopefully, um, yeah, in the future, like we're going to be running competitions, and like as I said before, like we're going to be running competitions. Like, like I said, um, a man here, Lee, remember, uh, Jim Lee, Jim my Lee, colleague who yeah. died there over Christmas, and um, we would have worked very closely together on um, a lot of these projects on the north side. We were heavily involved in stuff that's happening, very positive stuff's happening up in um, Durndale. Um, and sadly, we lost him over Christmas, so we were actually talking about maybe um, yeah. dedicating a perpetual trophy or something to him. Um, in the up and in the open comp yeah. I mean, we are going to be running competitions, so 
obviously we'll be rubbing car, uh, running competitions. So we're going to dedicate one especially to um, yeah. Mr. Lee, yeah. Mr. J, Jim Lee. But uh, we have um, a working committee now here yeah. based over Northside with the management of Northside Shopping Centre. Brian from the boxing, ourselves from the city council, the GAA, the FAI, and the local guardian Kulak, and uh, I think we're a force to be reckoned with because uh, it's we d we don't do talk shops. When we come no. into these meetings, everybody is given a task to do, and you take it away. Um, our next battle is going to be trying to convince uh, parents and children not to take bikes over the green spaces and the pitches, these motorbikes, mm -hmm. um, which are wrecking all our green spaces. So that's our next big task, we, whether it's through education, uh, just trying to reach out to parents to say the damage that their kids are doing when they're buying these bikes for them. They're, they're not taxed, they're not insured. Um, there's been... Uh, Fatality. Fatalities. Fatalities. Yeah. Um, so that's that's our next job to try and just promote sports, promote use of green spaces. Uh, we have a walk. Uh, we have every Tuesday morning around in Stardust Park, and already yeah. some of the women from that walk through Operation Transformation yeah, have linked in with Brian to do some boxer size. Yeah. So you can see the way the wheel is turning, and uh, it's all positive. Yeah, it really yeah, is. It's, up, yeah, a that's all we want to send out of here is positivity. Like that's all we want. Like no negative attitude. It's just positivity. Like even as Madeline saying that walking group over the north side, it was my first meeting a month ago, and. It's, it's unbelievable to see that what they do in the community is just, it's unbelievable. It really is. What they do in the community, you don't say because of behind closed doors, but they really do work really, Oh, my really boss hard. is seeing this. <laughs> but they do, on all jobs, so they really do Trojan work, and I have to say that now because we wouldn't have this place only for Madeline and Alan McKay because Alan was great. No, it's, it's just great. The building was lying here derelict and the car park um, again was becoming a dumping ground mm -hmm. people were coming in here and they, they were doing drug deals mm -hmm. and since the guys came in uh, the whole you can see the car park the way it's after cleaning itself up and uh, you only have to look at the kids that are coming in here to see the positivity yeah. to thank all the people that help in the club yeah. we're just officers yeah. um, as you know but uh, the tremendous work is always done by the coaches and uh, I think there's four or five coaches out there at the moment. There are another two or three involved with the club who wouldn't be here tonight because we have different nights yeah. that they come and go and uh, for the structures and so forth. But what we firmly believe in is that all of the coaches that we have here are all Glen boxers, mm -hmm. former Glen boxers. We try to keep them when they finish with their boxing career, if they have a, 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 a mm -hmm. liking for to go into um, uh, into the coaching end of things so that um, they, they, they come back here still as members and they, they go and do coaching courses with the Irish Amateur Boxing Association and they can come in here then and continue and then train these young kids that we want you know, the, from the area and get them going. So all of the coaches we have here in the Glen are all former Glen boxers. Yeah. That's not to say, by the way, that it's only the <laughs> boxing coaches will be allowed. It's take anybody. Like that at all. It's just that we like to try and keep them uh, because associated with the club and, mm. and they're from the area and mm. you know the area but of course if, if, if a coach wanted to join us from former boxing associates there's no problem there there's no problem I mean we will take anybody for help uh, because help is not easy to get no it's very very difficult these days it's probably the same for all types of uh, sporting clubs or organizations it's very hard to get uh, people to give free time and uh, which is what's required because um, Boxing is, there's seven days in a week, but boxing on a serious level, amateur boxing on a serious level, is at least five of those days. And you're, you're looking at opening here at six and being here till 10 o'clock in the evening. So yeah. it's quite a bit of time that has to be uh, given. And uh, But like we'd appreciate an hour or two hours of any coach's time or yeah. even anybody. We also then have the people who are not coaches or are not directly involved in boxing, but who come in and give their time such as uh, manning the doors, Check uh, just the checking that they, yeah, mm. uh, taking the subs at the doors. Mm. Or new members maybe coming in looking to join, that they can speak to the, the parents and, and, the, and the children and uh, tell them what it's about, where we're at. Certain rules and conditions, obviously, because without rules and conditions, it would be chaos. Mm. So they have to abide by all of that. And um, yeah, so we have uh, some people that give their time they could possibly have their kid in here boxing, whether yeah. it's a boy or a girl, and if they want to just give that little bit of a uh, few hours while they're here, we would accept that and we uh, um, and we embrace it and we take yeah. it. And uh, so for all of those that do that, we must sincerely thank them because um, we know it's not 
Yeah, but it's absolutely tremendous for us because it lets the coaches get on with what they're trying to do rather than try to um, chaperone children or kids at a very, very young age that come in because they just are a little bit, let's say, <laughs> a little bit, say yeah. Bit, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so we have all that. So it, it's kind of a policy that we do like from the people from the area to, 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 to give a hand out if they can and, and, and we do all that. Come up and see me. That's all you have to do is just come up and see. Like if they want to, uh, we have a website, uh, Glen Boxing. Just go on to Glen Boxing. I can't remember the hell it is now off the top of my head. It's a, uh, oh, it's Glen BC. It's right? Glen BC. Yeah. Like if you just want to come over, any kids that come over, it doesn't matter where they're from, race, creed, doesn't matter. Everybody's welcome here, N male and female. Everybody. There's no boundaries whatsoever. And if we do, if they don't like the boxing, we'll send them out to the soccer. If they don't like the soccer, we'll send them over to the swim, and we'll find something <laughs> we'll for find them to something, do. Yeah. yeah. Like, as I said, we have to be clear that there's no boundaries, like, everybody's welcome, everybody.